Okay, in the last tutorial, we talked about how to um, make directories. So I'm in my um, documents directory right now. I'll do a uh, PWD to show the full path here. Root, home, dan, documents. Also, you can see here, this is home, and then this is documents right here behind the, um, the dollar sign, which is my command prompt. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create a directory for essays. So I'm going to say mkdir essays, right? Now I have a directory called essays, and now I'm going to make a file inside of it, touch sa1.txt, let's say, and then I could do the same thing, and I could even say, let's try this, sa2 space sa3.txt, right? I could do that. Now if I do ls, you can see here, whoops, I put SA1, SA2, SA3. I created three text files, but I didn't put them inside of my directory, my folder, essays. So let's talk about how we could move these files, right? So we could say MV for move, and I could say move SA1.txt, right? So here's the move command. This is the file I want to move and then where you're going to move it to and what's its name going to be. So I'll say I'm going to move it to the relative path essays, right? Forward slash sa1.txt, right? And if I wanted to, I could give it an absolute path. In other words, I could say um, root home, whoops, home dan documents, right, essays, right, so root, home, forward slash dan, forward slash documents with a capital D, forward slash essays, forward slash sa1.txt, right, and that's going to move this file, right, from the current directory into over here with this name, but since I'm already here, all I need to do is just give it a relative path like that, right, and so I'll hit enter, and now, if I hit ls, you'll see that SA1 is no longer here. It's no longer listed. But if we, let's list out what's in the essays directory, right? You can see SA1 is actually now in the essays directory. Notice how I did the ls command, and then I gave it the path for what I wanted to look into, which directory I wanted to list, right? OK, so let's move the other two. So I'll just do up arrow, and I'll move SA2, right? And then I'll just move SA3, right? And now if I do an LS, I have a directory called essays. I'll change directory into essays, right? And then do an LS, and there are my three files. So now we've learned the move command. Now, another command that we could use is the copy command, right? So, I could say I want to cp for copy, sa1.txt, right? And I could copy it to dot dot up one folder, and with a new name called, I could give it a new name. I could say my new name, sa1 dot txt, right? My dash new name dash sa1 dot text and place it one folder up. And I could do that. Now, let's go up one folder and ls and there is the file, right? But also, if I list what's in the essays folder, you can see that it was copied, right? So I didn't move it. A move actually um, cuts uh, in Windows language. Uh, it would be, you know, cutting the file from one directory and pasting it in another or something like that. Uh, in this case, it's, we call it a move command. And then a copy command will duplicate the file and place it somewhere else, and you can give it a new name. Okay, I'm going to change directory into my essays folder 
and I'll do a list. And so now I have these essays, and um, these are all, let's say, three text files with text in them, you know, my essays. And if I want to see the text that's in one of these text files, what I can do is I can use the cat command, which is short for concatenate, or stands for concatenate, and I can just type the text I want to see. So essay1.txt, right, and hit enter. Now, we didn't get anything back because when I use the touch command to create this essay1.txt file, there's no text in it. It's an empty document. So how do we put some text, or how do we edit this text file? Well, I'm going to show you, I'm going to type a clear command here, how to do that using a text editor that is can be used from the line command, right? A non-graphical uh, user interface program that we can use to edit text. And there's a bunch that you can use. And in the um, curriculum, we have to learn how to use Vi or uh, Vim. But an easy one to start with um, is uh, Nano. So we'll just type in the program Nano. I could type in Nano, which is going to open the program Nano, and I can also tell it what file I want it to open. So I'll say I want it to open SA1.txt. Now, I can tell it to open SA1.txt, right, because I'm in the proper folder for it, right? So when I'm doing this, it's kind of like saying open this directory forward slash SA1.txt, right? If I hit enter, it opens up the program Nano, and look, Nano can run in the terminal window, right? It didn't open up its own program window or anything like that. It's just, you know, in this in this terminal. And I can say, hello everyone. Great to be Okay, so I've typed some text into my text file, right? And um, once again, this is not a word processor. You know, it's not, I'm not able to do a lot of the formatting of, or word processing. It's a text editor, so it's going to create text. It's perfect for documenting things um, in the computer, configuration files, help files, um, important stuff that, and um, very easy for the computer to read this text, right? but it's not a word processor per se, right? At least not one like Word, let's say Microsoft Word, which has all these fancy tools. Um, okay, and now I want to save this file and exit it. Well, I look down here and I can see some commands here, right? And this says exit, and it looks like it's Control X. So I'll type Control X, and then it says, do you want to save this? And I'll just type Y for yes, and then it says, down here at the bottom, file name to write, and it put in the default that I already have here, sa1.txt. If it wasn't already named, if it was a new file, I would have to write the name of the file, right? And that's what I want. So I'll just hit enter. And now, you can see here if I type ls, I still have the file in here. But now, if I use the cat command, and I say sa1, right? Uh, oops, sa1. Dot txt and cat that out, you see it'll show me the text in the text file, right? And that's the cat command. It'll actually output to the window whatever's in the file, right? Um, the text that's in the file. And so that's pretty useful. Now, if I want to just use nano and create a new file, I could say nano, right? Open up nano, type some stuff, dot, dot, dot more stuff, right? And then control X to exit. Yes, I want to save it. Hit Y on your keyboard and then give it a new name. SA4.txt, right? All right, now I've got SA4.txt, right? Do I need to put the .txt? That's kind of a Windows thing, right? When I'm putting the .txt. I don't need to do that. I'm kind of doing it because I'm, you know, I use Windows all the time and I'm used to putting this .txt file extension. Do I have to do that, right? Let's change it. Let's change the name of sa4.txt to just sa4. So I'll say mv for move, right? Now, the move command was for moving one file to one place to another, but it can also be used to change the name of a file. So I'll say move sa 4.txt to just SA4, right? 
and what I'm doing is, is I'm not really moving it into a different directory I'm actually just changing the name I'm moving it from this name to this name right and I'll hit enter right ls and you'll see we've got sa1.txt sa2.txt sa3 and then there's just sa4 right it doesn't need the file extension to function in Linux in Windows this file would be broken but not in um, not in Linux so I could just type cat sa4 and there's the stuff that's in the file right the text is still there it still works right but in the Windows system if you remove the file extension right the the operating system doesn't know what to do with the file most of the time so anyway that's uh, the cat command the move command and the copy command and also we learned how to use the nano text editor alright